Honestly, I've tried everything. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to fix it for you. I hope so. I've not been able to work for a year. It seems like the, um, the problem is that the, the lens cap was on. Oh, so it's working now? Well, yeah, should be good to go. What a lifesaver. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, that'll be £30 for the... Go on set, please. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Stephen Trice, and welcome to the roast of 2021. I thought that the election was rigged. At the beginning of the year, things were different. Trump was president, Kim and Kanye were together, and you could search Paul Skull's toey banger without throwing up. The year got off to a bad start. A third lockdown was announced, Covid deaths were on the rise, Storm Kristoff hits Britain and Glastonbury was cancelled. Ah, can things get any worse? Oh yeah, Stephen Tries stopped uploading. Are we going to have some gasps there? Um, pro probably not. Elsewhere, Joe Biden won the presidential election, so it was out with the old and in with the older. Because of the result, the US Capitol was taken over by far-right extremists, leading to five people's deaths. I haven't seen a Trump cause that much of a mess since I sharted on a bouncy castle. In Asia, Chinese mine workers were rescued from a cave underground after a fortnight of being trapped. That many miners haven't been saved since Prince Andrew was put under house arrest. It's good to be back. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back. In February, Captain Tom Moore became Captain Tom no more as he passed away. He left behind a great legacy, raising over 30 million pounds for charity. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan decided they wanted to step away from royal duties and move to America. Prince Andrew wanted to go as well, but the police stopped him at the airport as they had to investigate his case. Over in the States, Lady Gaga's French bulldogs were kidnapped. She offered half a million dollars for them to be returned safely. Although, if they're French, they probably ran back home anyway, the cowards. Sorry, can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical. In March, Harry and Meghan hit the headlines after being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. They announced that they were having a baby girl called Lilibet. Or to give her a full name, Lilibet Ten Pounds or Uncle Andrew is a nonce. Piers Morgan furiously waddled off Good Morning Britain after he was confronted over his Meghan Markle comments. I'm surprised he couldn't hack it, to be honest. Outside Britain, Pope Francis became the first Pope to visit Iraq. Oh, haven't those kids suffered enough? I'm disgusted, absolutely disgusted. In April, Prince Philip passed away at the age of 99, just two months short of getting a letter from the Queen. Philip was in the Royal Navy and famously battled for a long time with racist thoughts. Later that month, the European Super League was announced. 11 of the world's most elite clubs and Tottenham were going to create their own league. Due to this, fans up and down the country went berserk. First, my wife abandons me for more money and then my club does too. Well, it's, it's not ideal. Well, I knew there was something a bit off when he uh, volunteered to be the academy physio. Yeah, but we're not talking about him. But much like a 31-year-old Everton football player, the European Super League was thankfully stopped and hopefully never returns. For vibes. In May, Nico Omolana ran for London Mayor, finishing fifth as the highest independent candidate. Looking out of his depth and dressed like an idiot, Boris Johnson was also in attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. On the 10th of May, there was good news, as a stranded whale was rescued from the River Thames. <laughs> then later that month, the stranded whale had to be put down. I really should have read ahead there. A Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates got divorced after 27 years of marriage. Thankfully, we have footage of the moment it happened. Bill, I want a divorce. I'm very proud of what we've done. In June, footage emerged of Matt Hancock having an affair with his aide. The ex-health secretary was clearly very remorseful when talking about it. Hancock. Matt, Matt! Whoa, whoa, easy tigers, easy tigers. Enough of Maddie H to go around. Um, I would just like to undress, sorry, address the images of me getting a little freak in the orifice. Whoops. Office. Um, I'm proper Soz, you're sincerely Fat Mancock. On the 6th of June, Logan Paul fought Floyd Mayweather in a lackluster exhibition match. I haven't been so disappointed with Mayweather since it rained on a bank holiday. <laughs> in other boxing news, the Social Gloves event caused many issues after an Eason Gibb battered his opponent only for it to be declared a tie. Something hasn't been so controversially drawn since a fan did this of me. 
You ought to be fucking ashamed of yourself, Alex Dingle, age nine. I can't believe you've done this. KSI topped the charts with All Over the Place, an album dedicated to his boxing technique. Richard Branson became the first billionaire to go to space. This is the furthest a member of the Virgin Group has been since I hugged a dinner lady. Things were also hotting up in the football as England reached the final of the Euros. After a hard year, people were brought together. Spirits were high, fans were united. That was until England lost on penalties and then players were abused. We've got an interview with one of the racist gobshites, Ian Bread. Ian, you're a bit late. Well, I refuse to get a black cab. Right. So, Ian, you're here to address the comments you made to Sancho, Rashford and Saka after the Euros final. Well, Saka shit, I call him. <laughs> OK. Well, these are three young guys representing the country at the highest level. Surely that deserves praise, not racist abuse. No, I'll tell you what the problem is with them. They're only good at shooting when it's in one of them drive-bys. Oh, fucking hell. <clears throat> Ian, we posted your picture online to see what people made of you. Oh, come on. I'm no snowflake. Ian Bread? More like eating all the bread. White bread up. <laughs> Ian Bread is so fat, I bet he came last in the human race. You fucker! This is gonna get fucking tasty, baby! In August, Rob McKelleny and Ryan Reynolds bought Wrexham FC. The Hollywood star's first move was to appoint Adam Sandler as the water boy. <laughs> You've had a year. Huh? You've had like an actual year to come up with those jokes. I know. America decided to start pulling out of Afghanistan. Biden was quoted saying, Sorry love, I'm just not feeling it tonight. And I've got to be up early for work. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, the Taliban are back. And the crate challenge took over the internet. Not to be confused with the Crate of Carlin challenge that your dad's done every night since the divorce. We are number one now. In September, Anthony Joshua lost his heavyweight world title belts. Oh, don't worry, AJ. You can wrap me around your waist instead, said every woman. And then... Salt Bay opened his new restaurant to mixed reviews with meals costing thousands of pounds. The bloke from the memes got a bit carried away, if you ask me. Not once did the one pound fish guy increase his prices. You should be at Tiger Tiger doing a club night appearance, sprinkling cat on a student, not overcharging for your salty meat. Prick. Speaking of salty meat, Nicki Minaj tweeted that her cousin's friend's testicles had swollen so big because of the vaccine. <laughs> what a load of bollocks. But Nicki wasn't the only person sceptical of the jabs and its effects. I'm now meeting with Mary Huff, who is a leading advocate for the anti-vax movement. So Mary, why are you so against having this done? Well, I just think, why should they have to have that done to my body? Well, to protect yourself and those around you. But my husband doesn't mind it, and it bloody hurts when you get it done. Well, only for a day. Yeah, but then after a few months, I've got to go and get it done all over again. Well, yeah, that's because of the different variants. I mean, you've got the Indian, the South African. Well, yeah, I get that. I've had the Brazilian one once. And let me tell you, my lips haven't been the same since. Mary, there's not a vaccine for the Brazilian variant. You what vaccine? I'm anti-wax, not anti-vax. Oh, Jesus Christ. Am I still going to get me 20 quid for this? Oh, my In October, Newcastle became the richest club in the world, as their new controversial Saudi Arabian owners are worth over 300 billion. Although, ironically for them, it looks like they'll be heading for the championship. Oh. Adele returned with her new album, 30. Her hit record, Easy On Me, was written to explain her divorce to her child. I remember when my parents got divorced and released the song He's Eating All The Mini Rolls Again, I Can't Do This Anymore. In other music news, former white woman and little mixer Jessie Nelson was accused of blackfishing. She responded to the claims by saying, Rah, one the blood clot you're talking about. My favorite drink is Malibu and me love the Fresh Prince. Case closed. Get out the way, you twat. In November, Inchalate Britain protesters took to motorways, causing chaos on the roads. We're on our way now to meet one of the activists. Where is he? Um, he's back there. Oh, shit. She's a beauty. In other car news, a terrorist in Liverpool tried to blow up a women's hospital, but was stopped by a hero taxi driver. A man hasn't been blown to bits in a cab like that since the days of fake taxi. In the celeb world, Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian started dating. A heartbroken Kanye West was trying everything to get back with her, including getting another message from her late father. I can't believe you're going out with the shit one from SNL. 
he looks like he proper stinks and I heard he got pegged by Machine Gun Kelly. Kanye is the best. <laughs> In December, photos emerged of popular train spotting TikToker Francis Bourgeois, and viewers were left wondering was it all an act? Earlier today, we managed to get an answer from the man himself. Francis, what would you like to say to the millions of people that think you're a fraud? It's all poppycock. Thank you. And of course, like any other year, we lost some great people. Let's take a look at them. And there we have it. That's it for the year. Um, what about all the drama with the blonde guy? Oh, well, God forbid I mention Boris Johnson. The comment section hates that. Oh, don't be mean, Stephen. My parents vote conservative. Well, fuck off to another video where someone asks a footballer who's got the swazziest drip, yeah? Because I'm sick of it. Drugs, lies, affairs. This is the government. Not a juicy episode of Geordie Shaw. Oh, but it's fine. Boris talks funny and he's got silly hair. He won't do anything wrong. The country's being led by corrupt, manipulative scumbags who are only honest once they've been sacked. 150,000 people died in a pandemic, but it's fine. The mate made millions selling face masks. They'll let the bodies pile high as long as the money is too. Happy now? I, um, I was on about Jake Paul. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> There isn't a vaccine for the Brazilian variant. What vaccine? <laughs> <laughs>